on to our second topic of this show, which is surrounding the news that broke today that the Premier League is planning on, or has announced that it will actually allow five substitutes to be used per game and increase the number of subs on the bench to nine. And that kind of follows in the footsteps of the Bundesliga who are doing that right now since they resumed. Teddy, do you think this is a good move by the Premier League? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. You can't, you can't play the games the way you know, the way they're going to be played after like three months off and no, you know, not many friendlies, not much training time, and expect people to be lasting ninety minutes regularly. And you know, the games are going to come thick and fast to get them all completed. And you know, it's not. This hasn't been you know thought up just off the top of someone's head. This has probably been. A decision that's been put forward on the advice of sports scientists and physios and stuff like that. Obviously, we've had two injuries before the games have even started. Um, I mean, we don't know the, the the explicit details around it, but I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of them was because of you know rustiness and that you know in the muscles of the players. So yeah, I think it's I think it's an absolute no brainer. I, I understand you know there's criticism of it. Um, which I'm sure you'll go into now, but for me, I think it's a it's a good idea. I mean, my only criticism of it wouldn't be of the decision itself. It's just more for me evidence of, and I've got to say this first as well. Apart from the first position, which was boxed off months ago, let's be honest, the rest of the league positions aren't going to have much integrity because so yeah. much has changed in the competition of the league season. Okay, not first place was twenty you know, 100 points clear, for better or worse. So you can say that one was going to be the same anyway. You know, Liverpool weren't going to suddenly, you know, drop all their points. But everyone else is open season. Like, you know, we're playing playing games in empty stadiums. We're playing them with five substitutes and nine on the bench. Majority of the season weren't played under those parameters. So it doesn't invalidate the league, but it does, it, it does in a, you know undermines the, the, the final standings of the league because they, weren't, they won't be what they were going to be. And I know we can't help that. It's not being a decision made by the you know, Premier League just for a laugh. It's because of a pandemic that they had no, you know, no hands in cause. And, but I think it, under the circumstances we've been, you know, been thrust upon the league, I think it, it's, it's a logical decision and it, it's, you know, it's a good decision for, it, for the for the league itself, it just again undermines the integrity of the of the league outside the first place. I think that's the the obviously what's being levelled at this decision, and if any negative like sort of comments on it all seem to be with regard to obviously the integrity and the fact that it's inconsistent with the three substitute format that came before the lockdown. But it's worth noting. I also mentioned the increase the size of the bench up to nine, which. Uh, I don't see. I don't see what's wrong with that in the first place. Even when we go back to normal, I don't see why we shouldn't have be allowed unlimited subs and only use three. Yeah, I mean, Italy do it. I know Serie A allowed twelve subs. I think. Do they like or normally or just normally? Like, yeah, I, even before the lockdown, they had like I think ten or twelve substitutes. I didn't know that. Well, that, that for me was probably the way it was going to end up anyway, because wasn't it the Champions League or just the final um, last year where they had the whole, they had like a 12-person bench or still yeah, three they, could come on. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I think it was going that way anyway. Like, you know, clubs have got 23-man, 25-man squads that they submit to the, to the league. So what's the... What's the, the use in having? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it would have went like that anyway. It probably just only accelerated it. I wouldn't like to see five subs remain like coming on. No, that would no. change half a team every game. I don't see the benefit of that. I understand why you do it now, but I don't want to see that stay. But the but the bigger bench, I think that's an inevitability anyway. Well, I don't see what the problem is. Italy have been doing it for a long time. Obviously, it's been the case for about I think since about ninety eight. Since ninety eight, I think they've been doing that at World Cups. You. Name a twenty-three man squad, and the whole squad is either in the starting eleven or on the bench. And, mm, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't see the point of wasting squad members. Like, just have them all there, ready and waiting if they're fit to play. Well, they've um, 
one of the criticisms has been that it'll aid the bigger clubs, won't it? You know, they've got more talent in their reserve pool than more expensive talent. So, say Man City will have much better ten man, nine man bench than say Burnley will, but they've got a better eleven for that reason. I don't think you like for the same reasons. They they are given a better advantage. The bigger clubs. I've got a financial advantage anyway before the ball's even been kicked because of financial fair play. You know, it's it it sorts out the teams who were already established and built up prior to financial fair play. So I don't see how letting them use more on the bench um, really accelerates or you know and you know accentuates that. You know, City and Liverpool and Man United and all that are going to have bigger expensive squads than all the other teams but that they've still got a bigger expensive you know they've still got a more expensive bench than a Burnley or a Brighton have got it got in their anyway, whole squad yeah. anyway. so I don't see the I don't see the the problem with it from that regard we've uh, it's not like you know at this level any clubs are going to struggle to fill that many bench players every single club in the division I think has got uh, another 23 squad they've all they all submit 25 man squads and I th- would imagine most of the 25 man squads feature, you know, most of them are going to be senior players with only a few young players. So I don't see the issue with that. I don't think it helps them any more than they already helped out already. What about Everton? How do you think it will impact us? Um, not, not a lot, really. I mean, I mean, it, it, will, it, it will only, it will only, you know, affect us in terms of we may end up given one month extensions to the likes of Nias and Martina just in case yeah, I think if we could only name seven subs as normal I think they'd be gone already we'd just make the announcement they were going I think with the injury troubles the um, you know the club have had already I think they might be holding off on that to see how everyone else comes through until before the, um, the cut off to sign the players back up but uh, it'll just it'll it'll just help a few young players really. With, you know, specific to Everton, you know, you'll see Anthony Gordon. You know, will probably get on the pitch more than he would have. Um, that's probably it, Jared Branthwaite. But I think that he, he he might have been on the bench anyway with an extended bench. Um, but he'll probably get more minutes now, given that there's the injury to Yerry Mina. But yeah, a couple a couple of young players in our in our respect because it's not like we've got. Loads of you know players who are senior players who are waiting to come in who can't get a spot on the bench. I and mean, we have got loads of them, but they're all out on loan. So we, I wouldn't expect to see Balassi or anyone on it. But oh, no. for the terms of the players who've reported back to Finch Farm, we're probably only going to see the likes of Gordon, Branthwaite, maybe Beningamy, whereas we might not have if it was a seven man bench. Certainly, I think that's the most important thing that I think as ever as ever, and we need to take advantage of is the opportunity to give more kids minutes. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of promising players there who, in normal circumstances, as we know all too well over the last couple of years, have been wasted in terms of not being given an opportunity to prove anything in the first team. This is that chance now. You know, we've got a bit of a depleted squad. We've got a bigger subs bench and we're getting five subs on a game. We've got to give some of these kids a chance. You know, it's likely that, you know, get a few more get another win or two and we won't have to worry about anything worse than mid-table. We might as well give these kids the chance to shine now. There's never been a better time. Not even specific to kids. I mean, you know, obviously, Branthwaite, Gordon especially, are going to get more minutes because of um, Branthwaite, because of the injuries to his position and Gordon, because he seems to have been, you know, sounded out by Ancelotti as a potential first teamer. Um, but, with the five subs, I think that's massive for the likes of Tom Davies. Like, I I imagine we're going to see a starting, you know, combination of Andre Gomez with someone else, you know, and they'll just manage Delft because Delft's obviously currently the senior fit defensive midfielder. And if um, there was only three substitutes coming on, it might it might have been, you know, Davies was, wasn't going to get a lot of game time other than when one of them needs to be rested. But now he'll, you know, he'll get minutes. He'll get a lot of minutes because he's going to have to, you know, lighten the loads, you know, on on the other central midfielders. Anywhere where there's a shortage um, in the team, so centre back, centre mid, especially, you're going to see young players given a chance. So we all knew, you know, Moise Keane was going to be one of the first subs, regardless. But 
would Tom Davies have been? I'm not so sure. If we hadn't got the injuries or if he only had a few substitutes we could bring on like three at a time or whatever. Obviously, with your five subs in mind and obviously there'll be a lot of rotating, what would be the first team sheet now given what we know with injuries? Um, with everyone who's fit now, you'd imagine it'd just, you know, more or less pick itself, wouldn't it? It'd be Pickford, um, only one or two positions, you know, Sazibi or, or Coleman would be up in the air. Um, but then it'd be Keane, Holgate, Dean, Walcott on the right, Delphin, Gomez in the middle, Bernard on the left for me, um, and Richardson and Calvert Lewin up front. So that leaves, you know, for, you know, players who were on the outside of that, but you know, could could come in and you know make a claim. Like, you know, Tom Davies will get on, Brantwaite will probably get on until Mina's fit. Um, Gordon will get on. As I said, Keane, Keane will get on. It will be, you know, he might. You know, there's every chance, you know, he could be, you know, it could the left position could be the same as the right back. You know, it will be, and Bernard will switch in and out depending on the game. But anyone who wasn't established in the first team when the break happens, I think, are going to get a lot of minutes because when you've got five subs to make, you won't have to be careful, like you know, holding one, you know, keeping one back in case of injuries and what have you. Yeah, and I think can you name any other sort of. Kids, I'm not. I'm not that clued up to be honest on the academy, the under twenty threes. Is there any busy else uh, who might get a bit, a few more not, minutes? Not based on what I've seen, but you know, you, there's some who are training with the um, with the first team. Like I think Tyler Onyango is he playing? Is he training with them? Um, I think that's the one I'm thinking of mainly, given that he's a central midfielder. Yeah, um, and Beningham, even though Beningham is playing with them, it might might have been as a necessity with you know Kabam and getting injured because he's a whole midfielder and what have you. So it it could, it could throw up a few surprises. I think the one everyone's got eyes on, it wasn't you know established before. You know everyone knows Moise Keane's coming on a lot, but I think it is Gordon. I think Anthony Gordon's going to be the one who will get the minutes that you know an outsider wouldn't have you know. Anyone who doesn't know Everton would know Moise Keane's going to come on a lot, but no one outside of Everton would know about it. And um, Andy Gordon, I don't think. Yeah, and I think it's always a bit of a buzz to see young kids come on and um, make an impact for Everton. So I think that's something I really, that's what more than anything I'd like to see Everton take advantage of with this new rule that's been introduced. Yeah, I mean, I. It can only benefit you. Like you can, if you're a young player or a fringe player at any of the Premier League clubs now, you've got to be ready to go because, you know, we're going to be a lot of games sticking fast. So the first team aren't going to be able to play every minute of every game, and there's going to be injuries that might not have normally happened. So you, you know, if you're Anthony Gordon and you see any midfielder or forwards picking up a pull, you've got to be like, this is my chance. I'm getting in. And I'm not coming back out. Definitely, yeah. What we've got to discuss also, I think it was announced today, I think, was it that the derby is going to be played on the 21st of June? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's 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 before this Man City-Burnley game, which is good. I was, you know, I was worried that they put that one on first because then that's... Gives them more of a chance. I, I thought that too. I'm very cynical about the way the Premier League yeah. operates in that respect. But yeah. it's not even like you know a case of you know they could still they could still win it at Goodison if they, if, it, if it is indeed played at Goodison. I'm I'm not even worried at this point. I mean, I might have been a bit gutted if it had happened under normal circumstances, but it's not going to be the same. Even it's if not normal team. circumstances. No, they're not going to be in the grounds. I'm not going to be going to work the next day to deal with them at all. The sting's being taken out of that. But yeah. I was, I was thinking if it's known on the night that they're going to win it or they could win it at Goodison, I just think that's tempting fate a little bit for crowds, isn't it? For both supporters, I'm not even pinning it on any one supporters, but there's going to be a fringe element who just don't care. Like, and I, and I think that's something everyone wants to avoid, but. There's two things really. We just need City to sort us out, and if the City don't sort us out, we just need to imagine this: just do our part and not lose. <laughs> Simple as that. Scenes, unthinkable. <laughs> I know. I know. We, we, you know, we're not not got a very good record in derbies. I think everyone knows this, but you know, 
we need to not be approaching this with the, you know, we're already guaranteed to lose attitude. Like we've not, you know, we've not, the players haven't given us much cause for optimism over the years, but, a, you know, one tiny crumb can be, they haven't won a Goodison for, a, you know, a while. They haven't lost either, but, you know, if we, another draw might be able to, just might be enough to sort us out, you know. Mm. But we're going to win it already, but you just want to, you know, you don't want, you don't want trouble, like in the sense of you don't want negativity coming on on the city of Liverpool or any of the fan bases on something that's so easily avoidable, because it will be, you know, portrayed as like football fans flawed lockdown and Being you know, the, oh yeah, spreading the virus, super spreaders and all that. You, you don't want it to. You don't want that negativity when we're, you know, planning for, when we're applying for planning permission for a new stadium. What have you? You just don't want any negativity associated with the club at a delicate time, you know, like like this. You just want. I do. You just want it sorted out. I I personally wouldn't even play the derby now. I I wouldn't play at a neutral venue. I'd just postpone it. I'd just put it, and you know, at a different time. You just say, right, we're doing that in four or five weeks. Let them win it, and then they've already won it when they play at Goodison. And you know, the the cancel games due to bad weather for like fans' safety and stuff like that. I think the, this could be another one. Go, you know, we're not going to play it so, um, when Liverpool can win it at Goodison because it, it it poses a gathering risk, which you know it does for it, for it both does. sets. To an extent, you'll always get the old gammons out there who are going to. They'll run out in the street and that. I think it's more the the gathering of like you know large crowds outside the ground because if Liverpool can win it at Goodison and a crowd of Liverpool supporters go to the grounds like they do with welcoming in the bus and all that, which you know a fringe group will you know matter of of people might do. You'll get copycat Evertonians who go and <laughs> counter protest almost. And have their crowd, and you don't want crowds at all. And people go, "Oh well, Klopp's going to tell them not to go." It's like, yeah, that that'll cut the ice with all the sensible people, but it won't with 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 idiots. And you can't. That's what these rules are for. It's not for sensible people. It's for idiots, and idiots don't follow them anyway. There you go. Yeah. I'd just, I'd just, it's not going to happen. But I'd, I'd just postpone it. Just go right. Well, they're going to play that in, in, you know, later in the fixture list when it's already boxed off and done. Because, you know, normal circumstances, you know, there's no reason to change it. But, you know, these aren't normal circumstances. Well, speaking of the fixture list, that's kind of why I first touched on the derby is, what is the fixture list like? Because I haven't seen it. How frequent are the games? We talk on two a week, every week. At first, I've only seen the first couple. We play Sunday, then Wednesday. Then the following Wednesday, we don't play the Saturday because it's FA Cup week. All right. So, so we play City, uh, not City, um, Liverpool at home. Um, then we're away at Norwich, which is on BBC, I think. I, I don't know any of this. I'll be honest, I haven't seen any of the TV I only, schedules I only, or not. Only saw it at a glance. The Derby's free to view on Sky. Um, then the Norwich game is on the BBC. And then there's a, we, we skip... I think the Norwich games first day is when it's the second one. But yeah, we I've only seen the first three games. I know that it's Sunday, Wednesday, Wednesday, but I don't know after that, to be honest. Okay, well, that's something I'll have to do a bit of research on for next time. Because I'll be honest, I don't. I think I've said this to you before. I think you're not too different to me. Where I've I've kind of lost interest in this season. Uh, it's it's something well, I'd rather yeah, get out I mean, the way. It's, it's easy to say that if you you know where. Six points off the European places, so we're not out of it, but it's you know, it takes some doing, and we're even more points above the relegation zone. So, us and Palace are two teams who are just you know playing the games to play them. Everyone else has still got stuff that's you know on the games, um, whereas we haven't. So, I think that's a specific thing to us that yeah, it'd be nice to have it back, but it's not as exciting because you know, if we were, if we were fifth, three points off fourth, you'd be daring to go, but it's the way the fixtures panned out before the, the lockdown, because we played so many of the top teams at once and didn't do very well, we sort of like lost momentum and went away from the, the European places. Whereas if we'd have been locked down three games ago when we were still doing, you know, we were still seven yeah, going into the Arsenal game and yeah, yeah, exactly. And we were on the Ancelotti way. We'd be going, we're going to batter Arsenal when we get when we get back and everything. And now it's sort of like that's Chelsea game. 
and the fact that we were rooted firmly in mid table just sort of punctured, punctured the um, enthusiasm a little bit for for me. But I I will be happy to see it back. And trust me, a couple of wins would soon change your mind. But right now, it's hard to like you know get excited, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of them. I think obviously I haven't watched the Bundesliga as well, which it's been all right. Like I've enjoyed seeing some football, but it's not the same. I think that obviously makes you a bit sceptical as well. I think I want to, I just want to see Everton do okay. I want to, I'm concerned about, I think I've said, I said this to Owen on yesterday's show as well. I'm, I'm concerned about some of our players' professionalism and how they'll motivate themselves without fans. It's going to be interesting. I, I, you know, we're, we're, we're quite strong at home. I'm bloody awful away from home, so you want to know. I, I'm, I, you know, will we have meet in the middle and have sort of middling performances, or will we be like every game's an away game, or we'll be terrible? That's what I fear, is, and I worry. I, I worry about the without the fans, can players like a Sigurdsson and a Schneider and find it in themselves to motivate themselves? Because most of the time, it doesn't look like they can be bothered. Who knows? I mean. Could be beneficial. You could see any. Yeah, I I was thinking about this. I think you could see an um, a difference. Why he's keen when he's not trying to force it because you know the fans are there and all that. And certainly think Tom Davies might benefit without the Goodison crowd because he's always always under pressure to like not. Ten. It's just a ten. Yeah, like it could benefit some players who who a little bit. You know, who, who feel the weight of the crowds on them, but everyone's like characterised good as soon as this like horrendous atmosphere to play in. It's not that bad. It can be bad. Like I think it helps the players more than it hurts them. But I think some of them. Well, the, the results. The results suggest that, don't they? Yeah, but you've got to remember as well. Okay, there's players who clearly feed off the crowd, like you know Richarlison, like Calvert Lewin, but then there's other players who are just complete professionals. Like I can't see Luca Dean being any different. No, like, there's players like that. But I'm worried. The ones who've been at the top, the ones who've been at the who've had a career so far, like Luca Dean's been a PSG, Roma, um, Barcelona. They're the type of players who've been at the top clubs who, who've got that level of like you know standards and professionalism. Walcott's another one. I think the ones who might really suffer with the um, crowd not being there will be the younger players because they, they're used to it and they've not got to the level where they can turn, turn it on and off. You know what I mean? Like I, Pickford, he's a weird one. Will he, which way will he go? Will he be better or worse than the crowd? Who knows? Uh, I'd worry if he gets any worse than he was before the lockdown. It was, <laughs> he was pretty abysmal for the, like, yeah. the last month or two before it. Well, I mean, not long and we'll see. I think we could be talking in a few weeks and then go, oh, we're absolutely dreadful without the crowd, but uh, or we could, you know... Could say I mean, all the Everton dars not being there might give us a lift, I don't know. Or in a few weeks we could be absolutely terrible or we could be brilliant. I mean, I, I know which one I'd put my money on because it's Everton, but <laughs> it, we'll see anyway. Yeah, that's obviously for a discussion show for in a few weeks' time when football returns. So there you have it, guys. Let us know what you think about the rule changes, about the new fixture list and all the updates that have been coming in basically about the Premier League. Let us know, give us a comment and give this video a like and a subscribe to the Softy Blues as well. And thank you guys for watching. See you later.